Hi, my name's Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex technical analysis. If you're new, welcome and if you're returning, welcome back and I hope that you had a great trading week. Last week there was a lot of opportunity um, in the market, especially uh, buying the US dollar. So I uh, hope some of you out there managed to catch a few pips off of that and uh, if you are new, uh, there's some more more education material in the, and the links are in the description box below on the website and uh, and some other stuff as well so please check that out don't forget to like subscribe and share uh, if you like this content as well so looking at the fundamentals getting into fundamental analysis and we know fundamental analysis is you know the reason and sentiment and risk off sentiment and risk on sentiment is why markets move so <clears throat> this week ahead we have the minutes from the Fed and European Central Bank policy meetings, and that will definitely be keenly watched um, as it's an indication of uh, what the central banks are thinking in regards to their monetary policy, uh, whether they're going to hike hold or more likely to cut rates. And in the European Central Bank's case, it'll be more adding stimulus alongside US inflation rate. That's definitely going to be important. Uh, jolts, job openings and producer prices. Um, UK monthly GDP figures is going to be important. The UK is going to probably be struggling um, in the lead up to Brexit as there's probably going to be no real new investment. Things are slowing down anyway, um, you know, and you can see that in the uh, data um, if you've been paying attention. Uh, so UK monthly GDP figures and trade balance, Germany industrial output and foreign trade. Um, that's important for Europe. China inflation and trade balance always important. Trade balance um, uh, is an indication of uh, how well the country is doing as far as gross domestic products and China inflation is quite important as well. Japan machinery orders, uh, Australia consumer and business morale. Investors will also react to Fed Chair Powell's and and sorry semi annual uh, monetary policy report. So. Um, some uh, important data and just a little bit of a I guess a recap on what's happened uh, from last week the um, here's a here's a piece from market watch and says it's uh, hallucinatory I think that's how you pronounce it hallucinatory yeah uh, to expect a half point fed rate cut now right but economists still expect a quarter point reduction so why is that important interest rates um, an interest rate cut um, will the aim of an interest rate cut is to cheapen the currency um, and to kind of maybe get ahead of any kind of economic slowdowns so um, due to the fact that we had a good non-farms solid jobs report all right uh, and in this article it says it removes any chance that the Federal Reserve will cut interest rates by half a point in the next meeting um, but they will probably get a court they'll probably um, cut a quarter point right um, and you can see that in the actual FedWatch tool, CME FedWatch tool, um, which is uh, the probabilities of the FOMC rate moves with the CME FedWatch tool. So um, I guess this gathers the data from the financial institutions and what you know where they're placing their their money and their bets. There's a hundred percent chance of an ease, even though this has changed. It changed on Friday to a bit of a. Uh, um, uh, a small percentage of no change and it changed back to 100% ease so there's a 95 if the market thinks that there's a 95.1% chance of a 25 um, sorry 0.25 a quarter point cut and a uh, 4.9 nearly 5% chance of a 0.5% uh, cut so a deeper cut is now probably off the table um, depending on obviously data it is data dependent so uh, the US dollar isn't out of the woods yet if they do get a positive um, uh, CPI number month for month CPI is on Thursday um, it's expected to be at zero if it comes in at maybe 0.1 Again, or even point two, if there's a if there's an uptick in inflation month for month, and even on the core, um, then um, again, I think that the probabilities will definitely decrease um, even more when it comes to a 0.5 percent rate cut. So, with that being said, 
and uh, um, I guess fundamentals and sentiment out of the way. Let's look at the technicals and starting off on the US dollar index. And so from last week, um, we already know that the dollar strengthened and the Dow Jones dollar index is just a measure of uh, dollar, the US dollar strength against the major currencies like the Euro, Yen and the Pound, as well as the Australian dollar. Uh, and this week we've had some decent news. So any kind of um, positive uh, price action. Uh, what you would have been looking for as prices came down into this demand zone, this demand zone as you started the week is looking for, um, you know, if you're looking for buy trades on the dollar, any of the dollar crosses, then, um, you know, looking down into lower time frames and uh, uh, basically getting some sort of confluence with the dollar index as it's going higher, you can pretty much look for buy trades on any of the dollar crosses. So looking into, you know, this week, um, price did, I don't think they've actually touched that supply zone, they've nearly pinged off it. Um, but if you are looking to potentially short the dollar or take advantage of maybe some sort of profit taking or maybe even some um, some uh, negative uh, uh, news, if the news comes out this week um, and inflation, for example, isn't great or worse than expected, then you could see something like this happen this week. And then what you would do is just go into any kind of uh, uh, US dollar cross and then look for some sort of uh, uh, sell trade. From a buy trade perspective, what you're looking at is probably I'll do a demand zone from there. Um, and uh, if prices do come back down to here and start to put in some positive price action, then you'd be looking for buy trades on any of the dollar crosses as confluence. If not, then you're looking at, you know, this this level a bit further down here for any, again, uh, buy trades on any of the dollar crosses. So now moving on to the dollar yen. The dollar yen last week, um, pretty much we were in between this demand zone here. Prices started to turn up and as you see, has kind of reacted off it this week and then ended up pulling back to this zone. So there were some sell trade opportunities here into the week as price came up into this supply zone. Um, this level is now touched once, this is the second time. So as a supply zone or a demand zone touches, the more times it touches, the weaker it becomes. So you have to, if you're looking at shorting this, you have to believe that the, uh, the Japanese yen is actually a bargain at this price and the dollar is gonna get you know, weaker um, for you to be, you know, short in this at this uh, supply zone. Also, um, the yen would probably strengthen due to risk off. So, if we're looking at updating the chart at the moment, right now you're looking at potential shorts, but keep in mind that we have had good job numbers, um, non farms way beyond. Uh, the expected number, so uh, it was very positive. Um, but you're looking for a short trades at that supply zone. If you're looking at buy trades, you'd have to really be looking at this area here before looking at getting long. Again, just keep in mind as well about risk sentiment. So if uh, risk is off, meaning that. Uh, there's a you know the China trade wars with the US starts to come into focus um, or there's some sort of uh, narrative regarding the global economic slowdown then the Japanese yen is also going to strengthen and if you know if you get that in combination with some sort of negative dollar news then this could be a decent short trade um, but personally I'd be looking for some long trades either into this demand zone here or down here into uh, this lower demand zone, it's 107, is a nice level to look for some long trades. Um, moving on to the dollar Swiss. <clears throat> and the dollar Swiss was a uh, decent, again, lovely, lovely buy trade right here. Prices came down to this nice, accurate demand zone here. And again, dollar strength, brilliant, bounced off of that continue going higher so there was at least a good maybe from you know the 97 to 99 200 pips 
in the past uh, two weeks if anyone took advantage of that well done um, and again you, to buy really the Swiss franc and in order to kind of short this area you would have to really believe that the Swiss franc was going to get stronger and the dollar was uh, was going to get weaker but um, decent move to the upside now let's see if there's anything that needs to be really updated and I think we can probably start to update this these demand zones here draw a demand zone there and there's one here as we made a higher high higher highs higher lows this isn't drop based rally rally based drop um, this is a uh, proof of value uh, supply and demand trading um, and if you want to know a bit more about that uh, there's going to be a link in the top right hand side and I'll explain more about the uh, proof of value concept in that uh, in that webinar so what we're looking for for buy trades for the dollar is a pullback into this area here would be the first opportunity before looking at long trades and again you can just zoom down into the lower time frame before looking at long trades and again if that one doesn't produce anything um, as far as any kind of price action then uh, you're looking at this area here for any long trades first shorting opportunities for prices to really come up to here before looking at some short trades there so um, it's a decent level to look for some shorts but again you'd have to really understand that risk off is coming into the market and the dollar um, has got some probably some negative sentiment or negative data around it so moving on to the dollar CAD and the dollar CAD has come down into this zone the Canadian dollar has actually uh, been quite strong recently I think it's one of the only maybe outside of the pound um, British pound that is not actively looking to cut interest rates they're on a holding cycle at the moment they've, uh, they've I think they're exceeding their uh, two percent inflation targets so they're in no hurry to really um, uh, cut rates at the moment so last week I think this is probably one of the best performing currencies um, the Canadian dollar so even though you had some US dollar strength the Canadian dollar still was quite strong so positive news came up but we ended up um, sending off a little bit uh, down into this demand zone we're at the yearly lows right there's this range here we're at the uh, 2019 lows and uh, we've kind of pierced that but I think it's still a decent opportunity to look for some long trades we haven't had a pullback in uh, in weeks and now when I say pullback I'm talking about a decent pullback to at least fair value in, in a few weeks so I think this is a decent area this demand zone from where we are now probably down into this uh, um, 1.30 level uh, for a decent uh, buy trade on the US dollar again depending on the data that comes out dollar is still number one regardless of what um, you know uh, um, happens in the, in the short term overall so looking at uh, the actual chart on the dollar CAD let's see if there's anything that needs uh, really updating I guess I can get rid of that matter of fact um, daily time frame has made a lower low so we've got actually a supply zone right there um, so I think anything from now regarding buy trades is decent lower zone would probably be a slightly better um, price but I think here is decent so anything from now and look for some buy trades if you believe that the dollar is undervalued here um, if you believe that the Canadian dollar is still gonna get you know go a bit lower then you'll be looking at any kind of sell trades from around this 1.31 level on the intraday time frame if not then this is gonna be your next level to look for short trades to buy the Canadian dollar over the US dollar so some decent setups I think coming up this week on this currency pair um, yeah I think that's about it uh, looking at the New Zealand dollar US dollar now and this week we had prices come up in fact this zone apologies it was actually drawn wrong meant to draw it from here you know even I make mistakes um, 
didn't see that that was actually the last bullish candle before prices made new lows so in actuality the supply zone started from here so uh, we did come up into this zone here right here and then actually pinged off it um, and again the dollar strengthening this week had an effect so uh, if you did take advantage of this um, well done but uh, luckily for me um, you know I didn't necessarily steer you wrong in this one but um, it really wasn't drawn correctly and I apologize for that so to correct this chart I'd have to draw this you can see where I didn't I didn't zoom in properly I thought that was actually a, 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 a bearish close that was actually a bullish close there I realized during the week um, that, that was actually a bullish close there so it should have really been here for the supply and uh, remove that but now what we've got is some supply up into here so if we do want to take advantage of any supply now you'd be looking for price to come up into this zone here before looking at short trades and buying the US dollar if you're looking at buying the New Zealand dollar again right now you're looking at buy trades and uh, some buy price action um, uh, again on the lower time frames four hour one hour um, or whatever is your trading time frame if that level doesn't hold then you've got a couple of uh, decent levels down here or down at the very lows even though the very lows have touched once twice already so be very cautious when um, buying down here so you'll probably be subject to some sort of manipulation as the level is quite obvious and traders will be looking at buying here so you probably get something like a manipulation before um, you know prices move to the upside if the New Zealand dollar is a bargain and consider the bargain down at these areas here moving on to the pound dollar and the pound dollar this was a nice trade um, took profit down here from up here price actually reached the uh, profit target um, and uh, again continues to sell off on the Friday so that was a as a decent trade um, right now we'll be looking for any kind of pullbacks into some supply zones so uh, the pound I can't see the pound really strengthening any um, great amount because the UK if you're not aware um, is going through a leadership contest with the Conservative Party which is the ruling government right now and uh, while the UK is leaderless and there's a lot of uh, Brexit fears um, it is uh, it's not necessarily great for the UK at the moment even though they're doing decent from a um, fundamentally pers fundamental perspective but I expect that fundamental um, uh, data to kind of shift to the um, to the to the downside so we've got a few new levels created levels here this week this isn't normally how I would draw um, any kind of demand to be fair but it's just I don't want to necessarily draw a wide zone um, of demand in you know when you've got supply there so I'm going to just basically draw it here as there is some demand here at the moment you've seen prices pierce through but not necessarily touch the second demand zone down here so I'm going to keep it like this for now there's a little bit of demand here and let's see what happens this week if you do want to be a buyer now is probably the time other than that if you're looking at getting um, advantage taking advantage of uh, the immediate short trend you'll be looking at this area here again just zoom down into a lower time frame like for example the four hour and then you'll be looking for short trades around here if not you can zoom out and get involved around here around it's 1.27 you know the start of, start of that supply zone around here before looking at some short trades if the dollar starts to look you know get weaker and if not um, you know the higher zone 128 level around here would probably be the, the a really decent area f in, to look for short trades but for now I think the uh, the pound is definitely a sell um, dollar being a buy trade and just look for really 
pullbacks into these supply zones. Um, unless something obviously drastic happens with the uh, the dollar, I can't see the, uh, the, the really the pound um, uh, becoming strong. If the pound does start to rally, it'd probably be only really, really because of uh, uh, market manipulation. Um, uh, like I said, in this uncertainty leading up to Brexit. Um, looking at the euro dollar now, euro dollar this week. Uh, there was a nice uh, stop hunt um, this week, and here it was the stop hunt. A lot of people, a lot of traders would have been uh, long here, placing their stop losses below this level. And you can see this candle takes out all the stops right here. Um, I pointed out to uh, the traders in the uh, in the group um, about this uh, this potential stop hunt this week, and here it was. Um, it was an obvious, very very obvious level. Um, and uh, we wanted to be buyers of the dollar anyway. Um, nothing positive really coming out of Europe, not, none at all. Um, and if you were chasing price, then you'd definitely be caught out here. And uh, I have been saying that this week. And uh, you can see what's pretty much happened. I'm gonna change some of this. I think I'll put that there. Actually, in fact, I'll put that up to the highs there. And we've got a bit of supply. I'm going to include that all that level there. So this week, being a buyer potentially of the dollar, depending on what happens, put maybe look for some sort of pullback into this zone before looking at short trades. And um, if you're looking at buy trades, pretty much anywhere from now this week, you're looking at a buy trade within this demand zone prices may pull back again we've got cpi coming out for the us dollar um and also monetary policy um statements um for the for europe and if not then you'll be looking at if prices do manage to come all the way back up to this 1.138 level then this is going to be where um you should be looking for short trades to get in some long trades from the absolute low of the you know of price for this year is going to be down here around this 1.111 level so uh, again this is touched several times once twice three times so could see a you know price come down here and see a manipulation before going to the upside um, but in my opinion the uh, the dollar is the buy and the euro is a sell uh, euro yen <clears throat> euro yen this week did pop up a massive spike and then prices went to the downside a little bit of risk off I guess um, the euro pretty much selling off came down into this demand zone but didn't really hold touched the top of that that demand zone there and started to move up slightly so uh, looking at that chart oh, back um, here we are so we're gonna delete this area here what I'm gonna do is just create a another I'll put that there for now and then put that there um, so yeah if you're looking for any kind of sell trades you'd be looking for price to come up into here and I do like this this area here this nice candle wick for supply but again uh, you have to believe that the Japanese yen is a bargain up here or that the uh, risk is definitely off in the market before looking at you know some short trades here um, if you're looking at buying the euro this area right here this is this level has touched once already so twice is okay you know it's one to one level is a is going to be put a better area and just just below right but when you start to again touch a few times that's when there's really no more demand there's always demand the best time to buy um, from demand is the first touch right so when prices created this demand zone and moved up and prices came back down that's always the best time to uh, buy I'm not saying that it's necessarily going to work out 100% but it's always the best opportunity to look for buy trades and same thing for example when prices created this supply zone here or this supply zone here this would have been the first area First time prices come back into this zone. Nice sell trade right there, which we did actually take advantage of this one as well. Um, but for this week, it's pretty much where you are. 
you're looking either for a pullback into any of these lower end supply zones or if you want to be a buyer of the euro you're looking at buy trades in that demand zone uh aussie dollar and the aussie dollar cutting rates this week um got stopped out for break even on this trade entered short on this candlestick here and prices came back um, before spiking me out um, and then non-farms came out and uh, prices continuing potentially to the downside it did touch this demand zone here right so there was a buying opportunity you would have been a brave buy really to buy right after an interest rate um, cut uh, on the Australian dollar but nevertheless Prices did go higher, taking out all the stops. This is where most traders would have been placing their stops, including myself. And uh, you can see where, you know, traders have been stopped out. Um, and then now potentially we could be, um, you know, on the way to the short side. An interesting article um, for the, you know, a couple of weeks ago was that BlackRock, which is, uh, I think they manage... Um, I think it was uh, six point something billion, I think it is, or was it trillion? I always keep keep getting the number mixed up, but they manage a lot of uh, uh, their, their valued assets, pretty much a, um, a, a, a huge as a, as a fund. Um, they are actually short the uh, Australian dollar and they see the Australian dollar going down to at least 0 0.65 um, cents. So, uh, uh, if you're buying here at 70 cents, there's, there's at least 500 pips if they're correct. Um, I'm looking at short trades um, on the Australian dollar myself. But again, it's data dependent. Um, if the dollar continues to strengthen and the Australian dollar continues to weaken, you know, data wise, then this is going to look like a very, very decent trade. And if the Australian, you know, RBA, uh, Reserve Bank of Australia continue to, you know, on their cutting cycle, then this could look like a very very decent trade all the way down pretty much if we're looking at it to around here the 65 cent level this demand zone here so um where does that leave us now if you're short well done if you're not short you have to probably be looking at you know any kind of pullback at the moment or if prices continue to make lower highs lower lows so they make lower highs lower lows you're looking for pullback into the lower high yeah, before looking at a short trade, that would be um, what you'd have to look for. Um, if you're looking for long trades, again, buying right here is going to be where you'd be looking for in that demand zone. Right now, this week, if not, it'd have to be all the way down into the 68.50, 68.40 zone. Um, and finally, the Australian dollar, Japanese yen. Uh, this week we had again a bit of a spike up, spike down, interest rate cut, and then prices have gone pretty much uh, a bit sideways over the you know the Thursday and the Friday. Um, risk is less off. There's always a risk off environment at the moment. There are things going on, global slowdown and things like that. And the Australian dollar um, is is quite sensitive to risk sentiment as the um, in a risk on environment the Australian dollar would do very well in a risk off environment the Japanese yen would do you know quite well so um, it's always worth even if you don't trade this having a look at this currency pair to see um, potential risk sentiment and you can see that there's been a bit of a pullback as well um, so risk hasn't necessarily been on the table or risk um, risk off hasn't been on the table as much um, you know especially with Donald Trump as well and um, and the uh, Chinese government and North Korean government um, actually uh, seeing eye to eye on certain things or at least, uh, you know, coming to some sort of, um, um, I guess, uh, karma talks and less war rhetoric, if you know what I mean. Um, the market has uh, rallied when it comes to the Australian dollar against the Japanese yen up into the supply zone. So there were shorting opportunities around here. Let's go to the Aussie yen. So right now, if you think that there's going to be more risk off involved, then you're looking for really kind of pullbacks and then looking for short trades or even a short trade right now. If you're looking for any kind of uh, long trade, we've got actually some hidden demand right there. Hidden demand. Um, so you'd be looking for 
buy trades right here. If not, buy trade in that zone there. Put it top of that zone. And then if not, probably down into that 74 round number is where you'll be looking for buy trades. And again, that's with risk being on. So you'd have to really kind of uh, think that the Australian dollar is a bargain down here at the moment. It's proven to be, you know, this proof this is the proof of value concept. Let the market prove where, you know, potential bargains are. Yeah. And then when prices come down into this zone, look for, you know, potential bargain you know prices again depending on obviously the fundamentals and risk sentiment so uh that's it for this week uh hope you found the analysis useful please like subscribe and comment share um and uh yeah if you have any questions leave them in the uh, description box below and i'll get back to you as soon as i can hope you all have a great trading week and take care